Listen! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Charizard fanatics across the globe, today is the day! We are about to take a fiery trip down memory lane of Ash's Greatest Ace. A story of trauma, friendship, tension, and everything in between. Welcome to the rise, the fall, and the rise again of Ash's monstrous powerhouse of a lizard, the OG demon, and the best of the best, Charizard! Take your seats. Grab your snacks and buckle your damn seatbelts, cause the roller coaster is about to begin. Chapter 1 Gentle Juggernaut. So, before this lizard became the disobedient, destructive dickhead that's plagued his resume, he was an adorable little Charmander. And believe it or not, I shouldn't exactly catch him in the wild. Let me explain. So, the gang's looking for Vermilion City, where they stumble across the shadow of a towering, gigantic mod. Oh my god, bruh. And as they get closer, they realize it's the mon. The myth, the legend, Charimander. Yeah, not yet, but soon. Ah. Atop this pile of rock. Pokedex says some bullshit about its biology, but most importantly, it will die if it flames dies out. And if y'all can't tell, he is down bad right now. Look at that flame. That shit's supposed to be a torch, and it's looking like it's barely a lighter. Ash goes on a monologue about how badly he wanted a Charmander for his first day of adventures. Yeah, Pikachu, be how your day one is talking. That's your man's. Never forget, you were the fourth option. And he couldn't help himself but turn that motherfucker Scully around and launch one of them balls like he Babe Ruth. But don't let that weak flame fool you, bro. Charmander was quick to 360 kill with that Pokeball straight back to him. Brock and Misty clown up talking about, you a L trainer, bruh, try that shit again. And Ash gives it another shot, only to have it work temporarily before Charmander escapes and gives these dudes the meanest stink eye. I can't even blame bro. Y'all seen that tail whip nigga take a hint. Nonetheless, clearly something is up. So they ask Pikachu to find out what the deal is. And after some translating to Ash, we learn that Charmander is actually posted up here waiting for his trainer to come and retrieve him. Slightly disgruntled, but accepting of the situation. The gang move on to seek shelter at a nearby Pokemon Center because it started to rain. As we're getting Ready to dig into some grub. Brock starts to think about Charmander like, damn, you think that Jenner came back for him? And Ash was like, you bet, Brock. There's no way he's still out there waiting in the rain, <laughs> or else he died. <laughs> you are right, Ash. And right on cue, we are introduced to Damien the Deadbeat. He got blue hair, Kenny from Beyblade's goggles, a hot pink t shirt, red bandana, and he is blue. <laughs> British. <laughs> Oi, man them. Look, yeah. Man's got bare Pokeballs, you know? God, you're so cool, Damien. God, I wish I had bare balls. But Damien, where's your Charmander? Oh, that little weak creamsicle colored chameleon. Don't get me started, fam. What a coincidence. We saw Charmander without a trainer, too. Oh, Damien, you're edging us, bro. You gotta tell us. Oh, since you're sucking me off, I'll tell ya. I left a little dickhead on a rock in the woods. Wait a minute. That thing is so stupid. The little prick keeps following me like I'm his nan. Only way I got rid of the little bugger was by lying and saying I'd come back for it. A little twat, believe me. <laughs> He's probably still waiting for me. And at this point, Brock had had enough. He walked up to them like, hey, you crumpet crunchy bastard. Huh? Boy, you better stop playing with me and get that Charmander. His flame better run out. Get your grubby hands off me, filth. What I do is none of your business. At this point, I'm like, damn, gym leaders really got no motion. Like, how are you going to talk down on Brock like that, bro? After Misty, Ash, and even Pikachu try and back up Brock, Damien says they got to duke it out with a battle. But before they can even start, Nurture tells him to calm the fuck down basically, causing Damien and them to dip. Realizing this man was a certified deadbeat, Ash and them decide to raincoat it up and head back to the rock to check in on Charmander. And when they arrive, surprise, surprise, Charmander's looking down bad as hell and getting attacked by a flock of Spearow. Obviously, this is barbecue chicken for Pikachu, but the bigger problem here remains his dwindling flame. So Ash and Brock use their coats and attempt to keep him dry as they run back again to the center to try and rescue him. Shit got so bad that his bro was shivering in the hospital bed, even Nurse Joy was like, how the Fuck, did you stupid ass kids let this shit get this bad? The gang stitched ASAP and said it was Damien. On oh God, I'm doing the same. And left the Charmander in her care for the night. After pacing outside the room for a few hours, anxious about what would happen, Nurse Joy came out and confirmed that everything was blessed and that Charmander would make a full recovery as long as he stayed put for the night. As long as he stayed put for the night. And surprise, surprise, in the morning, he's gone. He Houdini'd. And guess where his ass started marching to? right back to that damn rock. So later on, Ash and them decide to move on to check off the other boxes of the episode. You know, fall for a team rocket trap, allow Pikachu to get captured by some weak ass contraption, the usual, and left with limited option. There was only one man or lizard to save the day. Sure.
And this is when I realized Damien's standards must be unreasonable. Cause this is not Ember, my guy. This is a flamethrower. I do not care. So <laughs> comment or skills to make it silly. And look who comes out of the bushes. Bro, you are not Swiper. Bro, this is exactly how them deadbeat ass dads be as soon as they son in the league, bro. He finally sees some competence in his seed, and now he's trying to reap the benefits. He did it shamelessly too, he said. Oh, Charmander, I've been looking all over for you. you always been my favorite Pokemon. What do you say we get on out of here? Really, nigga? Careful, Charmander. He's British. He probably could have gotten away with it too, till Ash exposed the fact that he was sneak dissing at the center, and Damien, instead of denying it, goes, Good thing I did. That toughened it up. What? That wasn't even me, bruh. That's raw, bruh. He then has the pride to go. To be frank with yous, I was gonna leave the little shit out to dry. But as soon as I seen that crack of a flamethrower, I said, bloody hell, mate. I might have to spit. <laughs> what the fuck am I? I might have to double back. And if that wasn't enough, he tops it off with. And the best part is, I didn't have to do the training myself. The nigga then self-reported himself out of the bag, bro. And then throws out Charmander's Pokeball to return it. And in this moment, Charmander had his choice to make. Once he's in that ball, it's GG's. Who knows when he'll be sent out again. Or he could <laughs> swat that shit back in his face and saute this wanker eviscerating him from Pokemon Forever. Let's go, Charmander. W self-worth. He then takes one look at Ash, and we know what this means. Now they locked in, and Charmander officially joins the squad. And what an addition he was. Now, if there was one way I'd describe Charmander's role on the team, it'd be as the gentle juggernaut. We saw him handle two gym leaders in Eric and Koga, but you could argue any Pokemon could do that. We saw him light the way for Ash in random times when he was in caves and shit, but that's nothing too crazy. But when we're talking dire situations, we in a pinch was the guy too. Take for example this near-death ass experience. Ash and them are on the St. Anne, right? Enjoying some cruising, some battling, yeah, yeah, yeah. And due to a series of unfortunate events, the ship is basically sinking. So as everyone's es escaping this freaking Titanic situation, Ash dropped one of his Pokeballs and the raging waves of the ship basically knock him unconscious. So they're basically in the Titanic alone, the water is rising, and they got no way to escape. And who is there for him? You are my sunshine. My goat Charmander not only lights the way for the team to get as close to the top of the underwater ship as possible, but he also welds out a hole in the ship and technically saved their lives. It doesn't really get more heroic than that. But we're still yet to see the true upper limit of what he could do in battle. That is, until this situation. Let me set the scene. So Ash is wrapping up a call with Oak, right? To express how happy he is to have gotten four badges. And Oak is basically like, Four? Only? Yeah, <laughs> my grandson's been had five. And oh, and also, when are you gonna send over more Pokemon? You ain't send shit since that yummy looking Krabby. That Pokedex ain't come without labor, young ball. You best get to step in. So Ash, slightly depressed, knows Oak is low-key right. And as luck would have you, Mankey, the okay. pig monkey, pulls up on the gang like, <laughs> Hello, humans. I see you got yourself some snacks there. <laughs> God, it does smell good. Brock's like, hungry ass pig monkey here, damn. And he snatched that shit and started chowing down. Yum. Ash's ass was like, hmm, he's distracted. I do need to catch Mons. Let's take advantage of the situation. Misty is like, without damaging it, shut up, bitch. And Mankey responds in the most disrespectful way possible. Instead of dodging or slapping the Pokeball, the man threw the snack back at the Pokeball and got this clown Ash to catch that instead. And that shit set Mankey off. Look at his eyes. Not only did Ash try to enslave him, but he ruined his snack. They turned to the Pokedex for advice. Mankey, the monkey pig Pokemon. Although this Pokemon can be friendly, it is prone to crashing out. Run. Yeah, the decks is spin, cause when the next minute of the episode, the following things happen. Mankey chases them for miles, he beats the living shit out of Ash, stains his fucking hat, mocks him like, uh, I'm Ash, go Pokeball, stupid ass boy. Nah, word to bro, I'm saying fuck the Pokeballs and I'm going Poltron on this shit. I don't know if Mankey meat is more monkey or pig, but the gang eating exotic that night. But if this Mankey wasn't devious enough, imagine my reaction when Team Rocket pulls up and amidst their introduction, James has the bright idea of kicking Mankey full force away. Brock tried to warn them that they were about to feel the full wrath of Mankey, but he was wrong, cause they were actually about to feel the full wrath of Primeape. Yes, my people, People, that shit was the tipping point for Mankey to evolve. Uh, and this prime was clobbering all of them. Nothing was worth every attempt and it was getting more cheese. Snuffing everything in its path. Using Thrash. 
clobbering Ash. He was on hot. Ash then realizes, bro, I got a full arsenal of equally devious alien monsters. Why the hell don't I actually try to catch it? So Ash starts letting the starters fly at him, but there was a problem. Squirtle just watched it and made it more mad. Bulbasaur's razor leaves just got countered, but Charmander. You are my son. Mr. Spark em up, got it done, bro. Charmander got it done, man. Wow, man. Wholesome, reliable, powerful, obedient, everything you want in an ace. I'm sure he's gonna be this way forever. <laughs> Chapter 2 Puberty Problems. So, everything about the rise of Charmander was fantastic, but unfortunately, the higher you climb, the more devastating the fall. And this fall was fucking devastating. And it came as the chapter of Charmander closed and another one opened. But what did that final page look like? Well, Charmander had to show off his heroics one last time as his chapter closed. And thank God he did, because it was for show needed. So, Ash and them are in a random town, coincidentally at the same time as the circus. Shit, I mean, you could say the circus is in town every city they go to, but this one is the actual one. As Ash and Brock are enjoying themselves, Misty comes across this fucking abomination of a magician named Melvin. And at our first look at him, we see him groveling and kissing feet of some random girl. Yuck! So this sim's biggest dream is to get a show in Vegas, but he's got one major problem, and that's that he fucking sucks. Ooh. And we get to see it in action after he begs Misty to help him run a show. Like his biggest flex is literally being able to juggle execute and they're doing most of the work. So after he takes this horror show one step further and accidentally almost burns down the carnival, the man gets fired and is now on the verge of giving up. But Ash pulls up like, Brat, are you a bitch? How about you improve your magic instead of quitting? Ash convinces him that he should leverage his Pokemon for his axe and puts on a little show with his starters to show what he means. But Ash then realizes like, how are you gonna use your Pokemon if all you got is some puss ass execute? That little roast pissed off the eggs into psychically controlling Ash, which lit up a light bulb in Melvin's mind. Instead of juggling the execute, why not use the hypnosis instead? Once Melvin realizes the power of hypnosis, he lures the mind-controlled Ash into the forest where there's a herd of something even better than execute, executor. A whole horde of them, in fact. And this simp-ass nigga deadass forces Ash to weaken them all so that Melvin can catch it like theory. And although his methods are questionable, to an extent, it's like the end justifies the means. You could probably put on a good show with that much psychic ability, right? Except that isn't even what he fucking wants wanted to use them for. He reveals that he wanted to use the executor purely to hypnotize the civilians and command all of them to come see my magic show. Ooh, this dude's so backwards. No wonder nobody respects him. Turns out that lack of respect ain't just by me or the girl or the carnival owner, but by his newly caught executor. Because after a quick and inconsequential run in with Team Rocket, these eggheads straight up disobeyed Melvin's orders and started stampeding back towards the city, rampaging through, destroying the whole carnival. As Ash and them catch up, they're told by the carnival owner that the executor are spinning back for seconds. So he had the bright idea of setting up a bomb trap and that would go off as soon as they got near the town. So Missy's obviously like, yo, that. That is OD, that is fucked up. And Ash knows it's up to him to stop them. So as per usual, he sends out his three starters, but only one of them really stepped up. Squirtle gave him some nice watering. Bulbasaur gave him some nice haircuts. These two could start off a great guarding service, by the way. Charmander knew what was good. He flamethrowered them up after huffing and puffing, going to his absolute limits against the stampede of exam. He finally kept them at bay. And let me tell y'all, all that XP did not go to waste. Cause finally, this dude started to get the tingles and evolved. Charmeleon, the flame lizard Pokemon and the evolved form of Charmander. Good luck! And you may be here thinking, evolving is great. What are you so stressed about, Wheezy? Ladies and gentlemen, they sent us a message at the end of this episode. Ash goes to congratulate Charmeleon on his transition to teenagehood. Hey! <laughs> Charmeleon must have gotten <laughs> so silly. Goofy. Melvin, you should sign him. Everyone thought it was funny. Except me! Open your eyes. There's something different about this his demeanor. But you know the episode finished, and maybe there's nothing deeper than it. Until the very next episode in the first battle we see him used in. So this battle is interesting because Ash and them are actually trying to lose on purpose. Basically, this girl Cassandra runs a pharmacy with her grandma and they need parasect mushrooms to make a miracle potion to help heal Pokemon around the world. Some real Mr. Beast type activity, so I gotta respect it. The only issue is that she needs to evolve this Paris and it's weak as hell. Like, look at this. Ash gets Pikachu to send out a bolt weaker than your day-to-day -day static shocks and it one shots he tries again with squirtle and a little water gun and oh, ah, same thing i don't want to get tmi but i piss streams bigger than this go on kelly shit but look at his paris dog ash said fine it's time for old reliable let's go charmeleon and this is when it became obvious once ash told him to go easy the man side-eyed then proceeded to flamethrower the paris to a crisp then tail whipped it into next week 
emoted on the nigga, then flamethrower Ash. Even Peach, you have to step in and fry the lizard just to let Ash return it. This shit was so traumatizing that Paris said, yo, fuck battling, and ran away. So the only thing on my mind at this point is what the hell changed? Why did Charmeleon go from this to this? Well, we'll get our answer shortly after, because later on that day when they try running it back with the Paris and the EXP glitching, Ash takes it as a chance to see what's really good with Charmeleon. As you'd expect, he wasn't going for it. Straight scratching himself like he skill swapped with a slacket. And of all people, Cassandra's old hag of a grandma reveals what the problem is. Of course your Charmeleon's acting like a bum. He gets it from his trainer. Oh. Of course he don't respect you. Even I can tell you're weak as shit. Damn. So that confirms it. The power dynamic has shifted to where Charmeleon feels like he's outgrown Ash, which is a dangerous situation as is. But it's not like Ash can just avoid using Charmeleon forever. That can't be the answer, right? So what is? So on another day, Ash and them are in a canyon looking for Pokemon fossils with a bunch of excavators. And after a boneheaded interaction with Team Rocket, they essentially accidentally blow up a bunch of dynamite, splitting the canyon open and causing him to bury himself in these underground, untouched caves with Team Rocket. As if the situation wasn't perilous enough, down there he learned very quickly that they had company. And that company was all the Gen 1 fossil Pokemon. They're looking perked out of their minds and for good reason. They never had human interaction in their life if you think about it. And the dynamite disturbed their slumber. And forget trying to catch him bro, cause they were not going for it. <coughs> not gonna lie, this situation is very dangerous. So Ash bit the bullet and said, you know what? Desperate times call for desperate measures and leaned on Charmeleon to help. But we know how this goes, man. That dude did not give a flying fuck. Forcing Ash and Team Rocket to run for their lives and attempt these sorry ass excuses for battle. No luck, no avail. That is until Mysteriously, after some grumbling in the distance, the relentless fossil Pokemon all halt their attacks and begin to scatter. Almost as if they were the ones that were scared. But what could elicit this sort of response? I thought it was only fossil Pokemon down here. Which still holds true. If you're paying attention, you'll notice there's one Pokemon we ain't seen yet. <laughs> Aerodactyl and my guy got straight to it. He then flew himself into the fray and knocked off Charmeleon in the process. Ooh, the arrogant dude getting tested. Aerodactyl, the carnivorous extinct Pokemon. This carnivore has sharp teeth to allow for its carnivorous day-to-day -day activities as a carnivore. What's a carnivore? It means we're dinner. He's not lying. This Aerodactyl it was in hot pursuit, but between him and his meal, was an angry Charmeleon who didn't take kindly the disrespect from earlier. But if the last knock wasn't shameful enough, I mean, does this Aerodactyl even see this lizard? One shot knockout is crazy. Aerodactyl then ends up snatching Ash up and Pikachu and Charmeleon grab on behind. After he essentially takes Ash hostage atop one of these rock pillars, Charmeleon demands this Aerodactyl to come down and face him fair and square on the ground. And Aerodactyl, being the dickhead that he is, looks at him and tells him to fuck off. And then this is where I knew Charmeleon was just different. The man deadass threw a tantrum, then solved his wingless problem by evolving on command. How did he just do that? He just evolved into Charmeleon like two episodes ago. All he's battled was that weak ass Paris. <laughs> Pure hatred and conviction, he willed himself into growing wings. And if I was Ash, I'd deadass be so tight. Cause his delusional ass was like, Oh my god, Charizard, I thought you hated me, but you really evolved just so you could save me. I knew you still loved me deep down. Who's gonna tell, bro? He don't give a damn. Do these full towers look like that of a mod who gives a damn about your safety? This is purely for his own revenge. Charizard doesn't even really get his get back against Aerodactyl. Jigglypuff ends up putting both of them flying monsters to sleep, and Charizard accidentally catches Ash before landing, and they both knock out. But honestly, by the end of this, although Charizard was clearly in pursuit of that Aerodactyl, we as the audience couldn't help but be curious as to whether this latest evolution maybe reversed Charizard's attitude. <laughs> Spoiler, it didn't. We've talked about Charizard's running with Magmar in the gym battle ranking video, so let me just summarize. Ash tries to use him, Charizard tells him to kiss his orange ass, Ash proceeds to lose, Team Rocket then attacks the volcano, the whole group's gonna work together to plug the hole, Charizard doesn't help until he sees Macho Man Magmar, Charizard's like, hey, respect, helps him out, and battles him, and this battle in particular was a little strange. It's like, have they settled their differences? I don't really know. Charizard actually does decide to battle, and he kinda goes crazy, but Ash's commands weren't even moves for real. It was more like, you can do it! But I don't know, bruh. When I saw Charizard wagging his finger at Pikachu, I thought it was like, I got this, buddy. And he even ended the battle with a seismic toss from Ash's request. So I was pretty hyped after the battle. I'm like, hold on, we got Squirtle. Don. <laughs> Pikachu. Don. Charizard. Don. <laughs> Ash might low-key win the league. So I was excited come the league, bruh. Ash versus Richie, especially after all the BS that happened this episode. Like, Team Rocket was on straight cock, bro. I had never seen them this persistent before. They even used the voice changer to pretend they were Richie to lure Ash outside, kidnap him, and force him to exhaust his Pokemon after Pokemon after Pokemon after Pokemon. 
just to escape and barely make it in on time. I'm like, this shit is too crazy, bro. Party HP in the red, probably hella status conditions, but one Pokemon, one potential savior was left unscathed. <laughs> And this right here was Atomic Bomb versus Coughing Baby. And let's just say that bomb was needed. After Ash lost Squirtle to Butterfree and retaliated with Pikachu, the rat proved to be far too tired to deal with Rich's Charmander, leaving Ash one last option. The GOAT! And if I was in any way apprehensive about what he could really do, he eased my worries completely by dogging Charmander. And I'm like, oh no, nah, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it! Out comes Richie's Pikachu, and now it's time for the 1v1. There's no way he fucks it up. Pikachu starts running towards Charizard, and he... It looks like Charizard is taking a nap! Yeah, bro. I was shocked too. It turns out he didn't battle Charmander for Ash, but just out of respect for the same species. Something that's obviously not the case for Pikachu. And that sealed it, bruh. On the biggest stage with the most pressure, not the crowd, not the trainer with burning ambition to be a master, not the respect for the opposition, nor the moment could bring Charizard to lock in. He blew it. He simply blew it. His own pride, laziness, disobedience, and disrespect ended up being far greater than any reason he could muster up to participate in this battle. And it's easy to be angry. I've been angry at him for the better part of this season, but at this point, it's just disappointing. So much potential in this nigga, so much promise, so much innocence just gone, bro. I can only be angry if someone underperforms my expectation. But at this point, ladies and gentlemen, this is the expectation. At rock fucking bottom. But the nice thing about rock fucking bottom. <laughs> There's only one way left to go. And that's... Oh. Chapter 3. Ignition on the islands. So despite him completely letting him down, Ash still opted to bring Charizard with him to the islands to collect orange island gym badges. And to be real with y'all, not much changed. Like sometimes Charizard did end up helping Ash with whatever he needed to do, but that shit was never intentional. And this is upsetting because by the game's logic, my guy shouldn't have any problems with Pokemon obedience. So what the fuck was Granny from earlier talking about? Well, we get this answer shortly after. In a later episode, we find Ash battling a random trainer with a Tauros and decided to give Charizard another shot. And like before, Charizard does not give a rat at his ass about battling until he gets attacked and then retaliates for himself. So yeah, nothing new on that end. Except this time, once the battle was done, my guy started flying around, sending flamethrowers in every direction. This prompted a special trainer to pull up and give her peace. That special trainer was Prima, aka Lorelai. She had her slow bro disable Charizard's flamethrower and set him down with Psychic before enlightening Ash with some wisdom. I'ma be real with you, cause clearly you slow. All those gym badges in that top 16 ranking, yeah, they don't mean shit. Besides, sexy YouTuber named Wheezy got you in 4k exposing that those badges were fraudulent anyways, so instead, you'll have to show him your character. And this is the exact advice Ash needed, cause later on, Ash finds himself in yet another battle against this dude named Tad. And you could tell bro was different, cause Ash chose Pikachu and he responded with Poliwrath. Let me put y'all on game real quick if a dude sends out a mon with a type disadvantage you might as well throw in the power right there and then because they got summon up they sleep and don't get me started on the belt he think he's seen him so pikachu as i expected tried and failed but polyrath simply tanked the thunderbolt hit him with hypnosis and hydro pumped him out then he was like i don't give a flying fuck about element matchups only element i care about is the element of surprise hmm the element of surprise huh please don't tell him he's going to no charizard all right man. this dude took that advice and ran with it bro are you sure you want to use that pokemon yeah of course i do but obviously Charizard was on the same bullshit. This time, it would come with a price. After constantly refusing Ash's pleas to try and move other than Flamethrower, Charizard was met with a very close call with Polyrath's water gun for the most devastating move he's ever been hit with. An ice beam so incredibly powerful that it left him completely frozen solid. Even after he thought out the ice, Charizard was so incredibly cold both internally and externally. And wow, would you look at that. Charizard's tail on the verge of going out, Ash out here taking care of him. Where have we seen this before? Ash spent the whole evening trying to warm up Charizard, rubbing his hands completely dry. And at first, Charizard tried to respond by them, but he was so cold and exhausted that he had no energy to. So back to warming him up. And on this rare occasion where Charizard essentially has no choice but to listen to him, Ash takes this opportunity to get off his chest what he's been feeling this entire time. You know what Charizard? It's kind of fucked up that you switched up on me as soon as you went through puberty. But to be honest, even though I miss how we used to be as a Charmander, I accept you for who you are. Honestly, my only goal is to keep working to be good enough so we can fight together again. For now, I promise we'll get you warmed up and then you'll be able to flamethrower me all you want. We're then met with a nice montage of the good, bad, and ugly of this duo's journey together. All hands on deck surrounded by campfires, the group rubs and rubs Charizard throughout the <laughs> with this flame growing larger. 
And by sunrise, in all of his glory, Charizard is back, baby. And right on cue, we get to see it in action. Because Team Rocket's about to do some kidnapping. Prime target, Pikachu. And believe it or not, hold on, I'm about to tear up. Charizard actually clutched the retrieval. Not only did he let Ash ride him, pause, but he also halted a flamethrower that would have roasted Pikachu as per Ash's command and stomped out the trap instead. Nah! I'm getting emotional. Naturally, Charizard got his rematch against Polyrath, and oh my goodness, he actually listened. Ash said dodge, he dodged. Mm -hmm. Ash said ember, he used ember. Takedown, takedown. Fly, fly. And most of all, seismic toss. Seismic toss, low dip. Holy smokes, fam. What a rush. Charizard is actually like a real deal partner now. So like, so now what? I think it's time for a victory lap. And what better way to start but with a gym battle? Not one of the Mickey Mouse Orange Island sculpting arts and crafts bullshit. Nah, this is some real deal battling. Matter of fact, first double battle of the series, and the last battle for Drake's Ash versus Luana. Marowak and Alakazam versus Pikachu and Charizard. And although Charizard was now chill with Ash, it seemed like the chemistry with Pikachu wasn't perfect yet. Like, you know this Ash gif? Whole time, this is from Charizard using Flamethrower against Marowak and Alakazam and ending up only scorching Pikachu. Charizard then tries to attack Alakazam and gets psychically controlled. Pikachu then decides it's time to get his get back and thunder shocks the lizard. Honestly, he probably had this pent up for time. Eventually, Pikachu thunder shocks Alakazam to release the psychic control. Marowak hits a body slam so mean that it looks like it's about to send Pikachu soaring until I got you buddy and that sealed it, bro. Chemistry on 100. They then team up and close in on their opponents, getting the double knockout and getting Ash the badge. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the ball kept rolling. We know how serious Charizard got. He done went K. Dot on Drake, doing serious chip damage until. Yeah, bro, this frame is still crazy. But anyhow, later on, we already know how dirty he did Gary's Blastoise. Seismic toss. Jeez. That shit was a banger every time. This Charizard was also running through Johto. Not gonna lie, as a you, I was always like, bro, Ash is such a dumbass. Why don't he just use his old Pokemon in a new region? This kind of put it into perspective for me. Like, on his second day of being in the Joto region, hot off that Orange Island's domination, finds this young trainer named Casey with a Chikorita. She was very clearly a new trainer with zero battle experience. After some friendly back and forth, Casey challenges Ash to a 3v3 battle. And Casey, bless her soul, sends out a Pidgey. And this dickhead, Ash sends out a Charizard. And I swear to God, this nigga blew smoke from his nostrils and knocked out the Pidgey. Then she sent out a Rattata, which we just saw her catch, by the way. Like, that shit is level 3. And all it took was a belly bounce to do the same. Finally, Chikorita. And y'all get the point. This shit was sad. Ash was dead smurfing. And Missy started to take notice of it because after Ash breezed through the first gym, Missy was like, Do you feel good about smurfing with Charizard all the time? Yeah, it does. As they're yapping about this, someone arrives that may just put all this ego smurfing to rest. Chapter 4, The Humbling Homecoming. This person is Liza. She reveals herself to supposedly run this Charizard sanctuary called the char Civic Valley. And she invites Ash and Charizard to pull up. However, she's only got a bit of room in her basket, so Ash is asked to simply ride Charizard for the trip there, which seems to me like a fair enough request, until Charizard's like, Why? With you on me? What's wrong? You two weaker is Ash just a fat ass. Before you know it, Ash and Charizard give it a shot. And not gonna lie, they were struggling. I ain't a female Charizard, I'm actually neither of those things, but this shit would definitely give me the ick, bro. Like, oh my god. After some bobbing and struggling and weaving and swerving, they finally arrive. The char -cific Valley, home of the strongest Charizard. And damn, why is bro out of breath like that? Look. Bruh, he trying to flex his pecs a little bit and come on, bro. You scaring the hoes. Even Liza was like, not gonna lie, Ash, you and Charizard could use some work. If I were to rank him among the Charizard in the valley, I'd say he's probably mm, dead fucking last. That set Charizard and Ash off, bruh. I challenge any of your Charizards to a battle. We'll show them. Let me at him. Let me at him. And it's like, damn, nigga, you that eager to lose? Now, peep this right here, ladies and gentlemen. They walk in and immediately these Charizard on a different level, bro. Battle rugged and massive. And Liza's like, how about you battle that little guy? Little guy, by the way. So Charizard goes marching towards him, gives him two pokes, and sneak attacks him. This is how I knew it was different. That man sucked in the flamethrower, swallowed it like some ramen noodles, then blasted the fuck out of that nigga back. He gave him CTE. Liza's like, shit, okay. How about the gentlest Charizard in the valley? Again, Charizard's like, bet. Flamethrowered him too, and the man straight looked at him like, really nigga? Acted like he was stepping away, then whipped him flat into this rock. Oh my god. Charizard being hard-headed, tried and tried again. But I'm trying to tell you, this shit was not close. It got so bad that Charizard got slammed out the valley and got the gates closed in on him. And look at him desperately trying to get back into the club. Nigga, you not like that. Liza even gave him a chance with Shorty's art. But one WWE move and my brother was in the drink. And that was the final ego hit. Charizard finally let it sink in that he was far, far below the others. He was instructed to reflect through the night before thinking of returning. And that's exactly what he did. Perched in the water with just his tail pointing out of it. 
he did this exercise of mental fortitude and meditated. His resolve was so heartwarming that even the notorious Team Rocket wanted to see him win, helping him stay awake. Not only that, they did some of the most W shit I have ever seen. They plotted a fake attack on the valley gate to bait Charger to come out and protect it. His valiant effort and desire to be great made Liza open the doors back to him. But this brings us to another harsh reality. Charizard isn't the only one who did some reflecting that night. Ash had a rare moment of maturity and came to the conclusion that if he forced Charizard to continue on his journey, it'd just get in both of their ways. Ash would improve as a trainer by smurfing through the region, and Charizard would improve nearly as much as he would training against these strong ass demons. So Ash made the difficult decision to leave Charizard here indefinitely and ran away before he could change his mind. Bittersweet, huh? Charizard remained here for the foreseeable future, only being called upon in rare instances like Battle with Gary or the final battle of the Blackthorn Gym against Claire or against Harrison's Blaziken, slowly improving his battle prowess as the seasons went on. But the summit of Charizard's career. In my humble opinion, the moment we could really see what he's about was when he was called up to face none other than Noland in the Battle Frontiers Battle Factory. One on one, no funny business. And who was this Pokemon opponent, you may be wondering? Articuno! Yes, sir! Battle of the Century incoming. Chapter 5, Sky Battle Summit. Ash takes some time before the battle to see how Charizard has grown. And it's pretty clear that he's better at not only flying maneuvers, but his flamethrower as well. Plus the man who learned Dragon Ball. After the test run, they head over to the battle factory to get started. Let's see what he's made of. He can tell off rip that Nolan knows what he's thinking. Hmm, I hope you didn't pick that Charizard thinking this type alone was enough to beat me. Well, my, that is exactly what I was thinking. Charizard starts with flamethrower and Articuno counters with ice beam. Hold on! Flamethrower actually overpowered it. Nolan's still looking cocky though, because after Articuno got up and Ash tried to reload the flamethrower, the Articuno gracefully weaved around that shit straight styling on him and gave him the eyes as he soared past them. Charizard then tries to chase after him, and Nolan gets Articuno to use Mist, blinded Charizard from getting in any closer before slamming into him. Charizard then tries Dragon Breath, which eventually hits Articuno. Charizard fails to follow up, because Articuno was just two Ds. Likewise, Articuno hits a direct Ice Beam, but Charizard moves like he barely felt it, then goes for another flamethrower and gets dodged, while Articuno closes in with a steel wing, making Charizard drop like a rock. With Charizard struggling to get up, Nolan reveals Articuno's devastating weapon. Hit it with water pulse! The whole time bro knew a water type move, and we had no idea. And I won't lie, that shit hit Charizard completely and directly, and slapped him into the wall. Tour got to the frontier and then started glazed talking about. He's always a move or two ahead. Ash then clearly shows he got someone up his sleeve, but he refrains from doing anything about it. Articuno then hits another ice beam, freezing up the stadium and even a bit of Charizard's wing, then follows up with water pulse. Not a Charizard, but out of blocks of ice. Painting these ice shards deals some serious piercing damage to Charizard. The guide starts glazing again. Charizard flies up into the air. Articuno hits him with a double whammy one more time and Charizard goes down. And then it seems Charizard's got a move of his own. Overheat. And against the water pulse, he goes neck for neck. Articuno uses steel wing. I'm thinking it's GG. But then I remember. Seismic toss. Seismic toss. You know what time it is. Then. Da dun. Da dun. Da dun. Oh shit. Wait, what? Psych! There we go, bro. Undisputed, undeniable GOAT starter ace, man. Shout out to Charizard, man, and what a roller coaster. Y'all enjoyed the story? Of course, don't forget to subscribe. Vote with the socials in the description. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. Peace. I hate a privileged rapper who don't even know what it takes. The diamonds they hit like a rainbow, that's cause a necklace of Frank. Whoa.